So question 15 from the non-right angle trigonometry sheet section A. So they're giving you a triangle. There's no indication that there's a 90 degree angle here. So we're thinking non-right angle trigonometry. We want to find two angles. We want to get angle R and we want to get angle T. So first thing we're going to do is label the sides with the small letters. So the side opposite angle T is small t. The side opposite angle R is small r, and the side opposite angle S is small s. So what we can do first is work out one of the two angles. And once we've worked out one of them, then the other angle is easy to find because angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So it's entirely up to you. You can work out R first or you can work out T first. But either way, we have to make a decision. Are we using the sine rule or the cosine rule? So if you look at the diagram, we know an angle, we know its corresponding side, and we know another measurement. So that's why we're using the sine rule here. So next thing we're going to do is write out the sine rule in terms of R, S, and T. So R over sine R is equal to S over sine S, which is equal to T over sine T. So let's say we're going to work out angle R here, okay? We're going to make a decision. Let's work out angle R. So let's tick off everything that we know. So we know small r. We know small s. We know the angle at s, so we can work out sine s. And that's it. We don't know anything else. Now, what we're trying to work out here is angle R. So I'm going to put a question mark beside sine R. So we're going to use the first two fractions of the sine rule here. Remember, one of the fractions you work with has to contain the unknown that you're looking for. So we're looking for R, angle R. And then the other fraction, you have to know what's on the numerator and the denominator. So we're going to be working with the first two fractions. So sub in the information. So r is 7. That's over sine r. And then that's equal to s is 12. And that's over sine s. That's sine of 96 degrees. With one fraction on each side, so we're going to cross multiply. So we're going to get 7 sine 96, and that's equal to 12 sine r. Divide both sides by the coefficient of sine r, which is 12. So we have. 7 sine 96 over 12, and that's just equal to sine r. The 12 here will cancel when we divide by the 12. Okay, now, we know what sine r is equal to. Now we want to get r. Remember, r is an angle. In order to get an angle, we take the inverse trig function of the other side. So the trig function here is sine. So to get rid of sine, we're going to take the inverse sine of the other side. So again, we're going to go to your cal calculator. We're going to make sure we're in degree mode. So shift sine and then 7 sine 96 and then that's over 12 and then close the outer bracket and then that's going to give us worked out angle R. So angle R is going to be 35.5 degrees 
and that's the 3SF. So we've got angle R. If you go back to the diagram, remember, once you've worked out R, and you know what S is, it's just simple mass to work out T. You don't need to use a sine rule again, just use the fact that angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So now we're going to get angle T. So to get that, we're starting with 180. That's the total angle in a triangle, and we're subtracting the angles that we know. So we're subtracting 96, and we're subtracting our value for R. Now, word of warning, don't use a rounded value. We've talked about this before. Use a previous non-rounded value. So I'm subtracting 35.46023. So we go back to our calculator. So that's going to give us 48.53977. Then we'll round our answer. So that means that angle T is 48.5 degrees to 3SF. And then we can group our answers together. So at the very end, angle R is 35.5 degrees, 3SF, and angle T is 48.5 degrees to 3SF.